It's me, Renee. I'm back. And as you can see from the title, from sorry, the title, from the date, it's November now. Non-fiction November. And uh, this, I don't know, maybe it's a bit like a bit of a cliché video, a thing that a lot of people are doing. But like, even though like if even if it's like a lot of people are doing stuff, it doesn't mean like it's not it's it's a bad day. And like cliches, I mean. They exist because other people do it and they feel like it works. So yeah, I wanna do it. So yeah, as you can see, this is me recommend recommending non-fiction reads. So yeah, uh, in the case you want like some recommendations, have you you want to do non-fiction number where you haven't really planned your TBR, maybe you just kind of randomly want to see some non-fiction recommendations or what have you, here you have some. Now, um, I've been reading more non-fiction lately than I've been doing, like, like before I used to be one of the people who said, like, non-fiction is boring, and lately I've been saying, no, I really like non-fiction. Uh, but, like, when I made this video, well, I planned this video, I thought, well, like, huh, I don't really think I have that many more new books than I did, like, on my last video when I recommended non-fiction. So, did I recommend non-fiction for History Challenge, or did I not? Not quite sure, but yeah, anyway, so yeah, uh, the fact that I might not have that many more books because I do know that I've read more non fiction than I've done the last few years. Maybe I think it's a mix of a lot of them being from the library, so like I give them back, and also, like, sadly, not all of them being all that good. So, like, I'm not gonna like talk about all the non fiction reads I've read, I'm gonna talk about the good ones that I can recommend to you, like. Like on to others. So yeah, that kind of means that yeah, the books I'm gonna talk about are if you've been here before, you probably have seen them before. But I mean a good thing can never said too much. And um yeah. Maybe maybe I'll ha have like a lot of new mm, new picks next time I do video. Maybe because like I have planned to read quite a few non fiction this November. If that will actually happen, I don't know. I mean, me being moody. I'm finishing soon one book though, so yeah. But yeah, anyway. So yeah, this is coming up soon, or day tomorrow. So if you want some recommendations, non fictions, here you go. And uh, let's start. Actually, the first one I'm going to talk about is actually a quite new one. Quite new and new. And I, I finished it recently, it came out last. Yeah. Last year, it is the heroine's journey by Gail Carriger. So this is um, non-fiction about the heroine's journey, which is actually quite like a famous trope, but it's actually not something people don't really know like that it has a name. So like uh, she, she starts by like, Gail Carriger talks starts in the beginning like introduction and says like. Uh, yeah, she just loved the heroine's journey, and often when she talks about it in conferences and stuff, people say like, "What? Are you making stuff up? That's not a thing. That's not a thing." And so she realized that that that, that, that there isn't really that many books about the heroine's journey, and she was like, "Okay, if no one else is writing about it, well, I'll write it myself." So this is a book about the heroine's journey, hopefully the first of many, and uh, yeah. It uses example examples from pop culture, pop culture books, movies, uh, TV series, also myths, and uh, yeah, it's not huge at all. It's uh, two hundred and seven pages. Uh, it's uh, drafted in chapters, which I suppose most books are. But yeah, uh, and it says on like in the front for writers, readers, and pop culture. Uh, fans, which I will say quite true, really, because like um, I used to be like an um a creative writer, like I used to write stuff, make stuff up and stuff. I haven't really done that in years now, but I still enjoy this to read like as a reader, like like oh yeah, that's true, that's oh that, that's how that works, and, oh yeah, and yeah. So yeah, if you like to, if you want to read about craft of writing or the heroine's journey. I would say pick this one up. Very good book. 
I have a book that I talked about last year, or I actually read it last year, and I've talked about it ever since in videos where I talk about nonfiction. But it's an amazing read, so yeah, I think you should read it, every single one of you. It is Pride by uh, blah 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 Tim Tate with, with LGSM. So as you see, you might see from the uh, cover, uh, so it kind of looks like picturey. It's okay. So this is kind of interesting, like in a way, story behind this book. Okay, so first in the eighties. This thing happened in Wales and in uh, England, and then in 2014, people made a movie out of this real-life event, and then after that, this book came to be, uh, that talked about, like, the story behind the movie and, like, what happened, really. Because, yeah, often when movies are made of uh, real-life events, they're sometimes loosely based, sometimes very based, and sometimes things are mixed up and different stuff and change and stuff and like yeah so this is kind of the story behind the movie and the story of the real life events that happened in case you didn't know what happened basically short it's about uh the queers in london in 1980s kind of their aid struggle but also like their community in london at the same time in wales wales had a big strike had a big strike minor strike for Many years, people were losing faith and it was just going the wrong way. And the queers in London decided to uh, to give money and raise money for the stri strikers in Wales. And so they made a community. And uh, yeah, that's, so it's kind of like a story about solidarity. It's a story about minors. It's a story about um, LGBTQ plus people in London, London and people living there. And uh, yeah, it's told in interviews, and it also has like kind of like pictures from uh, from a time, like from what happened. And then it's also, are there some pictures from the book? From uh, sorry, from the movie? No, it's just pictures from like what what happened. And uh, yeah, it's yeah a very inspirational and uh, interesting story, really. Also, very much recommend the movie. Uh, it's a book that I would say it makes a cry of happy tears and also sad tears because some people will, in this book they talk about die because AIDS, but also happy because the community and the solidarity is just so strong. And um, yeah, I recommend it so much. It's not big at all. And also, yeah, for non fiction November, if you want to like, go to one prompts, you can go with this for treatment because you. It was treatment of the minors from like they were the world around them, but also the treatment of the gays all around them, and like how they treat each other, and yeah, so that one works as well in that way. Then we have Art Matters by Neil Gaiman. So this is basically just kind of like essays, well, essays, it's not essays, but like small quotes on like the importance of writing, importance of art really, and with illustrations by Chris Riddle. And yeah, it's not long at all. It it ends at like give me a moment. It's like yeah, fifty pages, not long at all. But yeah, it's just a very good little book about quotes about the importance of art, uh, both like art as in paintings, but also like the written world and yeah. And uh, yeah. do you like the little, little read? I recommend it. Uh, the Book Lovers, Miss Colini. So this one we read last year and this is kind of just like, um, kind of a little like, book. yeah, a little as you can see. It's a little book on kind of like facts about books. It has lists on most, most rare books, most stolen books. It's a uh, list of kind of, what's it going on again? Uh, aliases of uh, famous, uh, famous authors and stories of like the publishing and the how it started. And yeah, so like 
different fun facts about books, really. So both publishers and authors and books and what have you, really. It's not a long at all, but it's, yeah, quite, quite good and interesting for a book lover. And it is just like 140 pages, 40, 20 pages. So not long, but amazing read. I haven't really thought about this before, but yeah, quite a lot of these books are quite short. So I suppose if you want to read like one or two non-fiction books, you can pick a lot of these because they read like during one day. Or I suppose if you have don't have a lot of time, you can be reading during two or three days. I mean, quick, quick reads. So I suppose maybe I'll stop title the wheel in that. I don't know. But yeah, um, then we have a bit more of a serious book. A bit more. It is. It mostly. It's not. There's no doubt about it. It's actually also a read, book I read earlier this year. So it's a book yeah, I haven't really talked about much about before. <coughs> All right. It is When I Call You a Terrorist, a Black Lives Matter memoir by Patrice Khan Colors and Asa Bandana. So Patrice Khan Colors is one of the people behind the Black Lives Matter movement. So this is a biography of her life, although well, it's kind of focusing on like her activism and yeah, the part of her life that kind of relates most to the Black Lives Matter movement. But you, she does also talk about, talk about other stuff and her love life and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, yeah, it's not a big book at all, but it kind of gives you a lot of uh, insight. At least I believe you get. Like, I mean. I suppose I can't really say I get insight because I can't really know for sure or not because I don't live in the States as well. From all I know, maybe this is just completely wrong, but it's biography, so it can't be right or wrong. But like, yeah, it feels like it's valuable and insight. And yeah, it's just, yeah, it gives you quite another look on how it is to be a black in America today. It's... <sighs> Yeah, it's raw, it's horrifying, and um, yeah, it's an important read. It's a very important read. It's not a fun read, but it's an important read. But it's also, it's not like, it's not complete dense. You have partial levity here and there, so yeah, check this book out. If you kind of want one important read, one relevant or like one contemporary read, check out this book. Then we have they came out quite a few years now. Well, quite a few came out. How many years did it come out? Let me check 2016. So, my god, seven years, eight years. Time flies anyway. It is Talking As Fast As I Can by Lauren Graham. At least, <clears throat> I think, at least for me, I used to think that like, okay, non fiction is just kind of dense, boring books. And so it kind of, at least I felt like often I didn't really think of biographies as non-fiction, but it is non-fiction. So like if you want to dip your toes into non-fiction, biographies and essays books are quite a good way to go because they're often easier to read. And they're most, much more accessible. And yeah, so this is Lauren Graham's essays that she, wrote, she writes about you know, her time in the Gilmore Girls, her time uh, I Gilmore, in Gilmore Girls and Young Life. I mean, the subtitle is... From Gilmore Girls to Gilmore Girls, uh, no, so from Gilmore Girls to Gilmore Girls, and everything in between. And yes, yeah, so it talks about how it is to be an actress and her life and her childhood and all this stuff. And uh, yeah, it's a delightful read. It's yeah, it's a very good read. I highly recommend it. Yeah. Then we have. Sorry. And then we have We Should Hang Out Sometime by Josh Sundquist. So, Josh Sundquist, he's actually, he's a YouTuber. He's also, he used to be, he used to be, still is. He used to be, anyway, I know he has been, I'm not quite sure if he still is, but he, anyway, he used to be on the Olympics team in the United States for swimming, for something. Uh... And he also is an author at the, at the moment. And uh, yeah, so this is his biography. 
though mainly it's mainly focusing on his love life or lack thereof of how he's kind of he like he it starts with him kind of thinking well haven't I had relationships and people sit around and say no you haven't and then it starts to go back through his memories and be like oh no that was just kind of me misinterpreting things and things weren't really uh, like they weren't defined and yeah and uh, yeah it's a it's a book for people who like to read about other people's relationships as well if you like to read about real life people if you like if you're a late bloomer, bloomer like me well, this is a good book to like know that you're not alone and uh, yeah a delightful delightful read definitely said uh, say you should definitely check it out very good read then we have Sorry, and then we have next to the last book. It is Weird Things Customers Say in Bookshops. Oh, sorry, it's more Weird Things Customers Say in Bookshops. So this is just kind of a collection of anecdotes and quotes, uh, more or less, from, the, from bookshops from all around the world. It started with Jen, um, sorry, Jen Campbell. Uh, she worked in a lo long time in a bookshop in Scotland, but I think also in London, if not quite wrong. And then she's kind of got a lot of uh, ideas and lots of inspiration to, for her first book. And then she made this book, but she also includes quotes from, from bookshops around the world. Obviously, yeah, people like coming in and saying the weirdest things. And uh, yeah, I do have to say, I believe the first book had better uh, anecdotes and quotes. This one is still good. And it is, it ends as kind of like 100 pages. So again, no big, no big book at all. So if you want a short little book to read, check out this book. And I don't know why I'm so close. I just am. Sorry. Uh, give me a little moment. And I'm back. And then we have that. Well, I was about to say last book. We have the last book that I have like here in my arms. I have. At least one, well, two more books I want to talk about. I can't let me find them, but I'll talk about them and link them. And uh, yeah. So now, lastly, we have Ja Ja Mensen Vaso. So this is a book by a Swedish influencer. I suppose you call this. Yeah, I know I'm mostly from this book. I was just, uh, oh yeah, you might know like what's this book about. Uh, because the title is Norwegian. No. Uh, so the book is called Yeah, I got my period. So what? And yeah, it's all about female periods and like how there's lots of stigmas around having your period in some places in the world. Having your, your period means you can't go to school and yeah, like lots of facts about periods and stuff like that really. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's kind of meant for like Preteens, but I saw this. I just looked, thought like the cover looked like the girl looked so cool in her expression, and the title just was like so grabby. It grabbed me so much. So I bought this when I was 25, but I read it also like the same year. And I would say, like, yeah, I highly enjoy it. So you don't really have to be 10, 11, 12 to enjoy it. And yeah, this one is Norwegian. Uh, the author is originally Swedish. I think her dad is British. So that's why her last name is Henry. And I believe this book actually is available in English. Not quite wrong. Might be wrong. I don't think so. Or else there's probably other cool books about periods in English. I think there is. But yeah, you just kind of felt like talking about this book. I do not actually get to it before in general, so yeah. And then the last two books, books that I haven't can't let me find, but yeah, just gonna show like pretend that it's here, it's invisible here. So the first book that I haven't that I don't know, can't find is An Ball of Rum by someone. I'll link it down below so you will find a link. I read it last year, and it's both about the history of rum. But it's also about the history of Caribbean and the history of pirates and the history of 
slavers because all of these things kind of go together with like rum and yeah and he kind of talks about the rum in like he talks about the different cocktails of rum so it's like he starts about talking about just like how rum started and then like roman cult again and yeah lots of different cocktails where you have uh, rum and uh, yeah the stories behind them really and yeah, I read it last year, and I delighted it me so much. Very interesting. I haven't really drunk and drinking, drinking. Haven't really. I don't really drink that much. Co drink, drink that much rum. But it was still an interesting read. So yeah, if you're interested in like niche things like that of history, I would say check it out. It is like around two hundred pages, so again, not a long book. And uh, yeah, and then last but not least. We have the bookshop again. Can't find a book. The bookshop book by Jen Campbell again. So this is a book about bookshops around the world. It's about the first bookshop in existence, like so old bookshop shops, about the oldest bookshops still in use, and uh, yeah, it's around three hundred pages and all about books and and bookshops and yeah, it's a very good book if you're into that, which you probably is if you're watching Bookshop. Probably are. And uh, yeah, that's my recommendations. So yeah, if you have any thoughts, any recommendations you want to recommend me for nonfiction number, please go ahead. Though I already have quite the list. But yeah, I hope you like this video and I'll see you soon. Bye.